Hello and welcome back to this damn Flavialistic Crusade. In part, uh, to go along with my censoring Ian Fleming video about my, my thoughts of the terrible idea to go back and rewrite and selectively edit the original James Bond novels for the 70th anniversary of Casino Royale and it being done by the estate themselves, or Ian Fleming Publications, I should say, uh, there has been further news about the rollout of the new U.S. editions, which are being done by HarperCollins, not by IFP, who are going to be doing the new anniversary editions in the UK, and those will be the ones with the, uh, with, with the very controversial edited texts. Uh, but it brought to mind a particular issue that's been, it's not a new thing, it's something that's been quite long-standing for, for a good number of years, and that is the, the seeming uh, the neglect U.S. publishers give to the, to the literary James Bond. Uh, every time a new continuation novel comes out or a relaunch of the books happens, it is done in the UK, usually with great fanfare. There are special editions done. They have special uh, press announcements. They do special public events. They, they, they make an event out of it. And there will be, again, usually special editions, multiple varieties. It's a big launch. You jump over to the US, and this goes all the way back. I'd say at least uh, at least to the early 1990s, during the Gardner era of, of John Gardner's continuation novels, because after the launch of, of his tenure in 1981 with License Renewed and the big sort of uh, press hype that was done and generated to announce the, the launch of a, a brand new continuation novels, uh, really the first official ones that have been done since uh, Colonel Sun, it was... You know, at least some fanfare on both sides of the pond. Uh, towards, I'd say, the midpoint of Gardner's run, everything had gotten sort of formalized. And you had here in the U.S. what we all associate with the Gardner tenure is the standardized uh, cover design and all of the hardcovers and most of the paperbacks, too, uh, which I always refer to as the Berkeley or Charter uh, type design, which is uh, the, the, the uh, publishers of the paperbacks. But this was also done for the reprints of Fleming's original Bond novels. So they had a uniform design. And even though they are not modern in today's world, they have a unique identifier and they have the bold background colors to them. So they stand out on the shelf and they have a nice uniform design. And even with the small sort of Bond silhouette, it it, it, it feels like a unified set. And, and I do really like the design of those. And I did kind of grow up with them over the years. So I have great fondness for them. But after this point, at the towards the tail end of Gardner's run and getting into the Raymond Benson years, there wasn't really any support for the Bond novels here in the U.S. And it was actually quite difficult growing up trying to get hold get a hold of the new Bond novels. There was some uh, some press hype when when uh, Raymond Benson was selected and Zero Minus Ten came out. And of course, I was still a budding young Bond fan, so I wasn't able to just literally uh, purchase books immediately on my own. I had to save up allowance money and different things to, to buy the new Bond novel. But uh, even then, uh, it was not as easy as it was to get, you know, a brand new bestseller or something because the books just weren't supported. And uh, even when you look at the covers for, for the Benson books, they were not, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty good, but they are very standard. And uh, once they got through their initial print runs and then did the initial paperbacks, that was it. And uh, they, they started drying up on the used market once uh, they, they, uh, the supplies were gone from uh, bookstores. And there just never was the publishing support behind them here in the U.S. And that really only grew when we got to the later continuation books, because there was a bit of a gap once uh, after Benson's final novel, The Man with the Red Tattoo. And when you get to Devil May Care and with Sebastian Falk, uh, that was interesting because there was a huge launch in the UK, custom artwork, all these events. And here in the US, we got, you know, art that was pretty good, uh, but, you know, not, not a whole lot of fanfare. And it kind of came and went really quick. And then with each successive continuation novel author and new book, it's been a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. And it's like the, the various publishing houses in charge of the literary bond have preferred to put as little effort into 
promoting the novels here in the U.S., which is, of course, a gigantic book market. So why they do this, I have no idea. And this also goes for the reprints of Fleming's novels. So it's not just the new books, it's all the books. And, of course, Gardner's novels and Benson's novels and Colonel Sun by Kingsley Amos, they were all allowed to go out of print for a very long time and then finally got reprinted, uh, or I should say, well, yeah, they all did get reprinted, but uh, they were not really supported, and they kind of came and went. So you could still, I think, get most of the Gardner reprint uh, novels in paperback form if you go to online uh, retailers, and you can get Benson's novels and the two uh, paperback omnibuses that were done that contain all of his novels plus the short stories. And then, of course, I think they're, they're, most of them are still around as ebooks, but again, those weren't really supported either. But it, it, it's, also, it's also, you have to look at the books that that simply are not available in the U.S. because there are some James Bond novels that simply did not get a U.S. release. The biggest example, of course, is Kim Sherwood's recent Double or Nothing, which is the first part of a trilogy. This is the U.K. hardcover. There is no... <laughs> there was no U.S. edition released at the same time. You have to import this. Uh, I... I can't remember. I'm not sure if this is finally out here or it's about to be out. But for some reason, they always think it's a great idea to delay the U.S. release if they have it at all, because there are some novels that simply uh, the U.S. release was, I guess, skipped because they didn't think it was important enough. That's what happened to the Moneypenny Diaries that Samantha Weinberg wrote. Now, this was a really interesting series of books written from Miss Moneypenny's perspective and set around the time of Fleming's James Bond novels. It's a sort of fun look at the Bond, the literary Bond, I should say, uh, from a different perspective. Uh, we did get a, a ver the first First book published here in the U.S. with decent, if maybe a bit generic, cover artwork, and there are two more novels and some short stories. But it was deemed not important to release the other two books here, so <laughs> unfortunately, if you're a Bond fan of the books here and you want to have a complete collection of all the various Bond novels by all the continuation authors, you have to import UK copies, which for some reason are absurdly expensive, so I've never been able to get them as of yet. And I still look occasionally, and when you go on eBay, you just see absurd prices, and they're usually uh, usually British sellers, so it's like, you know, 62 pounds or something crazy. And of course, you do the currency conversion, and it's just like, I just want these... <laughs> In physical form. Uh, so I think they may be available as ebooks, but I'm not for sure. But that, that I think, plus the uh, deciding to not publish Double or Nothing uh, when it came out in the UK in, in a US version subsequently, uh, those are just, the I think, the biggest examples of, of the US publishers don't care about the, the literary bond, which doesn't make any sense because I don't know how you'd have an easier sell <laughs> And selling books. I, 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 I don't know why it, you can have untold amounts of books and book series sold in every bookstore in America, but, you know, why they don't think it's important to promote the Bond novels. It, you know, it, I, again, I, it should be an easy sell, you would think. But that brings me to if I thought it wasn't possible for a U.S. publisher to care less about the literary James Bond, we have to come to the 2023 uh, relaunch of the Ian Fleming James Bond novels here in the U.S., which is being handled by HarperCollins, instead of IFP, who are handling the U.K. rollout. And it has not been said or specified, but I can only assume these would also unfortunately be the altered text that IFP has been in charge of. Uh, again, this is merely an assumption, but if they were going to alter the books in the UK and HarperCollins is handling the release here and all, all the other copies are put on moratorium and pulled for the this new relaunch, I would have to assume that these are supposed to be the bastardized altered versions that are going to be sold in the UK. I could be wrong. I certainly hope I'm wrong, but uh, it, it, it would make sense that these would be the altered versions as well. 
they have released three of the cover artworks. They have released the cover art designs for the first three novels, Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, and Moonraker. All the other covers are to be revealed, and you they are, there are you know the usual blank photos on the pre-order listings at, at various retailers. And, of course, they're doing a whole thing of, oh, well, you'll have to wait for the cover to be revealed. And they're doing a rollout. So Casino Royale comes out in May, and it looks like they're staggering the books one per month till they reach the end. And uh, all of the ebooks are prepared, and apparently they're going to be released in one or two batches sometime in May of this year for the U.S. But what really strikes you immediately and lets you know right off the bat whether these are going to be the original texts or if they're going to be the U.S. premiere of the bastardized altered versions that IFP has prepared. I think these are probably the worst covers of any James Bond edition I've ever seen. Not simply because the art is bad, or, but because it has the least amount of effort put into it as I think you could possibly have. So here, what you're seeing right now are the three covers for the brand new relaunch of Fleming's original James Bond novels from HarperCollins. These are not mock-ups. These are not uh, display demos. That These are the actual covers yeah, they they have a matching design using the, the the 007 numbers, but from the layout, the 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 font choices, the design, it is as generic as you could possibly get. And if that was not enough, uh, some eagle-eyed fans have already noted that the images chosen uh, are not even that difficult to obtain, particularly Moonraker, which is not even a photograph of a rocket. It's a photograph of a missile coming out of water, but it's actually a photograph of a missile coming out of water. That's literally one of the first results that you get when you're using purchasable photos. So this is a stock photo that has just been cropped and tilted slightly to the side and put inside some zeros. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I've seen bootlegs of the James Bond novels, photographs of some covers of, of, of Bond novel bootlegs that had more care and effort put into these. Uh, with so many independent publishers around and, and so many self-published authors around nowadays doing the best they can with uh, self-publishing, I, I mean, I've seen self-published books look better than this. This is... Uh, I mean, here in the U.S., we, we have many, many stores and places that will uh, sell remainder books or, or, or especially remainder books uh, from various small publishers that were inexpensive books to begin with, uh, particularly the, the, uh, the stores like the Dollar Tree chain. Uh, every Dollar Tree you go into where, you know, ostensibly everything in the store is is around a dollar in price. There's usually a, a small uh, end cap where they have a, a bunch of random remainder books. And every once in a while, there's like a, a major uh, published work but, but that they're just uh, somehow some remainder copies that had not sold and, and had been marked for remainder sale turn up at places like this. But you're mostly seeing uh, random books that are usually have very generic and cheap looking covers. And, you know, you kind of glance at them and, and go, well, who thought that was a good idea? Because <laughs> you know, some of these, it's just the most generic thing you've ever seen in the world. These are worse than that because it, it, it's not only generic, but this is from a major publisher. And this is for this is for a Bond novel. So I don't know how much more you could <laughs> basically say these aren't important for the U.S. market. We don't care. We just have the license, and so we're just going to crank some copies out. It, 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 I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I, I, I don't like to nitpick things. 
usually I, I only comment on on the the book covers if it's a uh, a literary bond forum where you can talk with other fans about your favorites and different things like that. But this is just like a new level of I don't care, especially using stock photos that anyone can easily find and the most generic looking cover possible. Uh, I mean, there have been simple James Bond covers. There are even simple covers now. If you look at the mock-ups of the uh, unrevealed covers that IFP has done for their UK anniversary editions, they are uh, the the placeholder before they reveal the cover. It's just a simple uh, sideways sort of stenciled-looking 007 logo with the title. But at least that took thought, and somebody you know, you know uh, thought about, hey, let's let's make the placeholder image look cool. Uh, to an extent, you know, it is very, it's very simple, but it's also obviously a placeholder. But even that is better than this. Uh, I mean, I think the only way you could have made this with even less interest is just slap the title on it. You know, I mean, it's it's that level of uh, if you're going to care this little about it, why are you even bothering with it? And there's no telling what the rest of the covers will look like in terms of what random images they've chosen. But, I mean, this just reeks of I don't care, uh, which any U.S. Uh, Bond fan of the literary Bond who follows the continuation novels, that's going to be no surprise. But there have been some good U.S. covers. I think the U.S. cover of Solo was was really well done. Um I, I actually kind of I, I like the U.S. covers for the Anthony Horowitz books, even though they're they're a bit simplistic. They're perfectly fine. They look good. But this is just again, I, I don't know if there's a worse James Bond cover because these are just someone obviously did not care. So the only positive to these is going to be if they somehow are the original unaltered text. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm left to assume, since there is zero information about these, that these are going to be the U.S. versions of the new IFP altered text. So again, I'm hoping I'm wrong on that, but I, I, I was just so taken aback at how lackluster and how these covers show such... Not just a little effort, but almost a disdain for even having to do them in the first place that I just I felt the need to say something about it. And none of this bodes well for it being the 70th anniversary of the literary James Bond and it's supposed to be a big rollout and a big anniversary celebration. And we have the news about the, the censoring and the revisionism. And now we have these horrible zero effort U.S. reprints. I just it does not bode well. So uh, I, again, these are just these are some of the laziest book covers I've ever seen. They are uh, again worse than generic book covers you might see turn up in a Dollar Tree. That's how bad these are. So th th this this is a new level of I don't care <laughs> in regards to publishers not supporting the literary bond works here in the U.S. I think so. That's why I felt the need to just at least uh, speak a little bit about it, because, again, these are just horrible.